It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Uh, I guess we can finally talk about the bottom two. I've been dreading <laughs> this. Um, no, I'm only kidding. I think we can certainly agree there's a clear bottom yeah. two. Yeah. In fact, North and West Coast are historically bad. And uh, w- what I mean by that is I saw an article today that uh, showed that these two teams have the worst percentages. Well, the only team that has had a worse percentage this deep into the season is both of these sides is GWS in the first two years of their <sighs> existence. Other than that, it's uh, the worst two. I think ours, ours is obviously worse than North's, but it, North's are slightly, only yeah. slightly, which is a yeah, huge pretty- indictment on North. I, <laughs> we can talk all day about how much West Coast suck. I totally acknowledge that. But the <laughs> fact that North Melbourne are only a sliver of percentage a- ahead, yeah. I find that that is incredibly disappointing for the form they showed last year. Because uh, I, I even going into the season, I was like, I knew they'd probably still be bottom four, but I thought they'd be top of the bottom four. I was optimistic. Mm. I thought. They'd probably be, be possibly in that optimistically missing finals group where they're excited for the future, but mm. it's still a bit stagnant. I think there's uh, there's injuries at play, at, yeah. it, to be fair to them, like there is with West Coast, undoubtedly. But, yeah, I, I think it's so bad that David Noble's not safe. And uh. he's only, what, his second year? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think there's, there's pressure. Mounting. Especially because of that controversy with him yelling at the players in round three, that, that was a big thing. That's right. I think he... Gave him a bit of a spray, and yeah. there was a bit of feedback that it was a bit far. Was that was yeah. what the story was? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, these things probably happen all the time. Yeah. Footy, to be honest, it's hard Ross to the boss, specific. baby. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I, Simpson loves a spray as well. <laughs> He's an angry man, um, as we saw on the making their mark documentary. Um, Jason Horn Francis is a is a bit of media sort of uh, swirling. What's wrong with my words today? <laughs> Some of the media coverage is sort of suggesting that Horn Francis might be on the way out. I, I don't know about you, but personally, I think I think the media is kind of talking it into existence a little bit. Mm. What do you think? They tend to take these sort of narratives and mm. run with them. It's yeah, especially with now Fox Footy's doing this. I think it's Fox Footy is doing this thing where they post an Instagram post called Fake Trades. <laughs> Have you seen those? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do a trade hypothetical. Yeah, so it was then, that Butters one. Yeah, 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 which was a hor- horrendous yeah, trade. Yeah. But... Um, it sort of just kind of adds to the narrative. Do you know what I mean? Like you see that and you think, oh, maybe Horn Francis is going. But it really is just mm. an Instagram post by Fox Footy just yeah. trying to get some clicks. Horn Francis liked it, yeah. um, which I think I think he was probably just laughing at it, to be honest, yeah. personally. I can't imagine he's already thinking about going home. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I got NBA 2K22 while I was locked up for the week with the spicy flu and it has like a yes, stream. with the flu. <laughs> and it has like a career mode and like, yeah, it like tries to bring social media and shit into it and you get really? in a beef with your coach and you can like to tweet saying this guy should start and that sort of shit. <laughs> That's like how part of the storyline. That is cool. Yeah. That is in-depth. Um, I like that. What are your thoughts on a North Melbourne priority pick? Because they've shown in the past, Ooh. Noble in particular when he was at Brisbane, loved asking for priority picks. <laughs> Do you think North Melbourne, A, should and B, um, will get one? Probably close to due. I'd... Definitely give them one next year if they have another shit year. Mm. Like this year, it feels like little borderline, but you could you could make the call like maybe a late first rather than like yeah here's top of the draft board type of priority pick. You could give them like pick nineteen. I'd be incredibly frustrated if they gave them a start of first round priority pick. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that should exist. Yeah, yeah anymore. exactly. The problem with the priority pick rule is that it's completely arbitrary. Like you mm. apply for it. The AFL, in their own sort of subjective manner, yeah, yeah, yeah. determines whether or not you get one. Didn't they used to have a rule where it was like you win X amount of games for X amount of years, yeah. you get it? There was an objective cri- criteria before. I so could see teams manipulating those as well. I guess that's why they got rid 100%. of it. Yeah. That, that was what it was. Yeah. Um, so if you had four wins or less, you got end of first round. If you did it two years mm. in a row, you got a start of first round. Uh, so so teams, if they were sitting on like three wins towards the end of the year, they'd just pull mm. the fucking pin. And get I think a good in 2001, pick. I could be wrong, but I think in 01, uh, you had mul- I think three teams got a start of first round priority pick. So it went one, two, three, four, five, six with the same teams. That's why Judd got, uh, sorry, West Coast got Judd and Sampy. Uh, I want to say Hodge and 
Roughhead was one yeah. and four, and uh, two and five might have been Richmond. Yeah, it was uh, Tambling. We might have been Lid? five or the no, like, yeah. I don't know, but I, it doesn't really matter. We're on a tangent here, but um, I am uncomfortable with a non-transparent um, policy here. The reason yeah. being is. Uh, who do you think the AFL is going more likely to give a priority pick to? Struggling North Melbourne, who are a fairly small market team, who is not necessarily as stable by contrast to a West Coast Eagles, let's say, yeah. who are deplorable. And I don't think we should get a priority pick this year. It'd have to be a couple of years of sustained shitness for yeah. us to even be in the frame. But I genuinely think the AFL would look at it and go, that team needs more help because financially they can't afford to be shit for too much longer. Mm. Whereas they're never going to do that with West Coast. Yeah, yeah. Just an example. Or they might tell North Melbourne, yeah, we'll give you a priority pick if you fuck off to Hobart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's where I think the integrity is questioned a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, and then, but putting that aside for a bit, should they get one? I think you're right. I think it's probably one more year before yeah. North Melbourne could um, get one and probably, I don't know, two years for West Coast. I'd say for West Coast, if you know we're still this bad in two years, you could easily make the case that that's just poor handling of the list over the nah. last five to ten years. On West Coast, yeah. what's uh, what's it like for you watching West Coast right now? I'd imagine this is some sort of it's, you've. Ca- I feel like you've cast a hex on this season as Fremantle fans, <laughs> and you guys are contenders as we're one of the worst teams um, in history. I, I, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think Melbourne over that period. That Mark Neal doing Dane yeah. there. I think we're still better than them. But yeah, um, yeah. W- what's it like for you watching us? Right now? Honestly, like, as I don't get me wrong, I'm like enjoying it, but <laughs> like I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought. Especially because I'm so much more invested in disliking Carlton compared yeah. to the. Eagles. That's taken a lot of my hatred away from the Eagles. Yeah. I was even saying to you, I'd wear Eagles gear on the stream if, in the Carlton game, but I realised it's here. Mm. Mm, true. Yeah. But I'd wear Eagles gear to that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Carlton. Yeah, I um, yeah, I, it's been. I I find myself a little bit emotionally shut off from it, and I'm not actually not actually hating it. I feel I know I haven't actually been uploading before. And You're I just think, like mmm draft picks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Jai Cully. I know I haven't been uploading a lot lately, and I uh, I would not be surprised if people perceive that as me losing interest in footy because my team sucks. It has been bad timing to take a break in that sense in terms of my brand. I could see that narrative. It actually couldn't be further from the truth. I'm invested. I'm on a big footy more so (laughs) than I've ever been on the last 10 years. Well, yeah, let's call it five years. (laughs) And I think largely because I'm looking at draft analysis, (laughs) to be honest. And why wouldn't you? Yeah, bloody earth. But what do you think about your mid-season draft? I was a little surprised you didn't take Jakey e. Florenko with the second pick. Yeah, so we, we opted for Jai Cully, who was... Well, obviously, uh, you'd take him yeah, the number one pick. He's, yeah. He, so he was considered the the best talent available yep. and projected to go, say, top 20 at the end of this year. Yeah. So, you know, when you have a 19-year-old top 20 pick walk onto your list that is yeah, hard to say no to. Exactly. Why did we not look at Florenko? My answer would be list demographic. And we desperately need to get as many of that 18 to 20 talent yeah. that group into our list. And Florenka is going to be 26 next, well, he's 25 this year, yep. mid season pick. Um, we've already recruited Greg Clark, who's 25, yep. and Connor West, who's 23, onto the list. So we're looking at this transition period, you know, after Shui Redden retire um, and, you know, all other retirees. Do we want to clog it with guys who are good waffle players, but not necessarily ever going to be A graders at AFL level? Uh, um, that's my thinking. I think they don't want to say next year we front up with Florenka, Clark, and West, who are yeah. three good waffle players. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it was a case of let's get the guys we think will be high level AFL players. Yeah, that's There's fair. a chance Florenka comes on and he's the next Tim Kelly, in which case yeah. we've made a mistake. But if he's just a good, solid waffle player in the mold of another Greg Clark, I don't think we need another Greg Clark. On the plus side for him now, he'll probably win the Sandover, so. Yeah, happy well, days true. for Jakey boy, and he he could still get drafted. So yeah. it, you know it exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, it just yeah. it's just not right for West Coast. It's yeah. in the line. We had a second pick that we passed on, but we decided to keep that list spot open in case one of our inactive players comes back. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's been. Oh, that's right. I didn't realize you could reactivate the inactive. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, it's it's unclear. Yeah. Like those rules aren't 
really clear. Yeah. You sort of read about him in newspapers. It used to be an injury list where they'd have to go on there for at least eight weeks and then yeah. you could upgrade a rookie. Now um, now the rookie list is kind of redundant. It exists, yeah. but it, it, you don't it's need to upgrade Melded into your main list, yeah. Yeah, it's just they're just cheaper main list yeah. players. That's all it is. Um, and they don't go under the salary cap. But yeah, so I think we, we can upgrade or reactivate any... Um, any of those four inactive players we have. Yeah. It, it's it's tough watching the Eagles where we... It sounds like excuses because I, I'm still very cognizant of the fact that we just suck in general, but it doesn't help when you've only got 25 yeah. players to pick from. You know, We had like two Waffle yeah. players play last week in, in, in the Waffle side, which yeah. is meant to be our reserves, yeah. which in theory you should fill with 20 players. Hmm. So the fact that even with no COVID, maybe one or here, cases here and there, we still are not being able to fulfill the waffle side by more than three players. Like, I think one got postponed because we couldn't field a team. Yeah. Didn't Ace Freo give you guys players one game? When you played Ace Freo, I'm pretty sure they gave you guys yeah, top ups. That might have been in pre season because I don't think yeah. they would have allowed that in an actual waffle game. I know that uh, one game was postponed. Uh, and we played it in the bye round. That's why, uh, when every other team had a bye. Um, it's a little bit of a waiting game for the Eagles fans right now. We're just counting down to November. <laughs> Honestly, there's just not a lot to look forward to. I'm still genuinely enjoying watching Eagles games because you go in with no expectation. And when you're 53 to 9 down against Adelaide at Adelaide Oval and you're not upset, it is actually kind of a welcome change, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Um, and what, I, what I'll say on that last game of the, uh, that we... So, yeah, as we filmed this, the last game we played was against Adelaide. I don't know if you caught the game, but from the moment I sat down, which was 53 to 9... We outplayed Adelaide amazingly somehow. Obviously, uh, the game was kind of over, but it was really interesting to me to see that we got a couple of goals in a row. We were still about four goals down, wet conditions, really tough ass to win, but we started really playing with intensity, and it just came out of nowhere. We were that pressure rating went up to two hundred, which was a season high. Not that that's a high bar for us, but um, we started kind of swamping them a little bit. And if it was in better conditions, we would have gotten closer, I, I believe. Uh, my point there is, it's just it was really telling to me how much of what's going on at West Coast is mental. There's fitness issues, talent issues, injury issues. Uh, I think the game plan isn't great, but again, it's hard to assess when you got all those other factors too. But for them to to actually show some fight, and as soon as the, you could tell that they could win the game, they started outplaying Adelaide well and truly for for a period. And to me, it just suggests that's the first time this team thought they could win a game for a long time uh-huh. and we saw there was some fight it would be great to say we can take that into the next round but we played Geelong <laughs> off the stadium um, where we're probably going to get annihilated but uh, yeah for the first time in a while that game we saw some growth I think so hopefully that's a sign of things to come but uh-huh. yeah I, I, I'll take whatever we get this year if we uh-huh. if we are stone cold motherless last we win a wooden spoon uh, we get Number pick one draft pick baby yeah we get pick one and <laughs> I, I think we, are, we need it um my ideal scenario is probably finish 17th, avoid the spoon, still get picked mm. two. Excuse me. Um, mm. Take George Wardlaw or, um, I don't know, Tom Scully, the the non-former. <laughs> Have you, do you know there's a Tom Scully in this year's draft? No. Nah. Yeah, there's another Tom Scully. He's like a top <laughs> five key forward. So I'm all over the draft. <laughs> I've been all over the draft since April. So, um, yeah. Start doing draft vids. Get into it's, it now. It's a bit early, I think. Um also, I, I am still more just like reading other people's stuff at the moment yeah. rather than, you know, being able to make good commentary yeah. vids on myself. You can watch some of their games now streaming on the app. Which yeah. Is, yeah. I watched the um, the Young Guns game. They basically had like the top 40 draftable players yeah. playing against... Uh, sorry, the top... Yeah, 22 uh, draftable players against Collingwood's VFL side. Um, yeah. yeah, I watched that because I'm like, oh, he could be an Eagle player. <laughs> Excuse me, I just spat all over you. I just... Um, I'm salivating at the thought of pick one. So, oh, baby. Um but yeah, anyway, that's well. That's the the, the eighteen teams we've kind of gone through yeah. in, in our general rankings. So, um, who do you think is going to win the spoon? Ooh, I reckon you guys will get a couple of late wins. Mm. North will probably win the spoon. Yeah, I think I I believe in cycles in football. I think we'll will improve at some point. We'll jag a couple of wins. I don't think we'll win in, finish on one win. And I think there's still some semblance of a good side under there just in terms of individual talent yeah. you know we've got to put it together so we could we could win three games uh, but at the same time you apply that logic to north as well they can yeah. easily do the same thing so i i don't know i think it might be us to be honest um but so be it so be One it. percentage <laughs> i'm just accepting it now i'm not uh i'm it's it's nice not having too much expectation going to the, up the stadium on a sunday night arvo game when Oof. you don't 
care about your team's going to get rolled is a lot worse though. Yeah, Still been it. going, but fuck. Yeah. I hate that's what home. that's what it was like as a fucking Freo member when I ended up turning them in just before COVID hit. Yeah, I don't blame play, uh, t- yeah. fans for not going to games. To be honest, uh, I still go to the games for the record. I'm just saying, if it's a drizzly Sunday night and you the Eagles yeah. are playing Melbourne at Optus Stadium and you've got work at five a.m. like I do on a Monday, yeah, fuck that. I do not blame you if you don't want to go because uh, <laughs> it's like an hour and a yeah. on the way home. But. Yeah, it's a bit of a trip. Anyway. And you can't even get a decent park near the joint. Nubers aren't can't drop you anywhere near the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, you're like the end of the bridge. I think is the closest I've ever got an Uber. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, that was the most passionate rant of the whole of that whole <laughs> podcast was me ranting about going to the games. 